In today's video, I will be showing you how to build this station in Kerbal Space Program 2, which means also a tutorial on the build, rendezvous and docking in Kerbal Space Program 2. This video is quite long, it's 37 minutes, but I'm going to be placing uh, shortcuts or actually chapters in the description below if you want to jump to a particular style. So, first we'll start with the station core, and that's this main pillar vertical that it contains of the crew pod, it contains of a couple of the batteries as well as the reaction wheels. And now I'm just going to go purely aesthetical to continue with the bill upwards. So I want to make sure that I find a good place how to expand this. So let's take this guy on top. Oh, too big. This one. Oh, yeah, that could work well. Uh, this actually is too long. Maybe I take a smaller one. Okay, like this. All right. So there would be the place where I would typically typically put communications. So I put two dishes and uh, the solar panels. And I think I'm going to go with the biggest one that I could muster just because, well, yeah, you need them. Okay, good. See, that's easy. I'm going to place them a little lower so they don't clip into the uh, antennas. All right, uh, let's see if we can place additional set of lights. There we go, some reflectors, just to keep the ball rolling and station well lit. And then, uh, by the way, this is, this build is a little bit accelerated. I decided to go with two or three even times acceleration so that you can still follow, but the thing is that it doesn't take too long. Okay, that's too big. Uh, large, okay, that's possible. So now what you wanna do is, I was thinking to exper try all of those, but in the end, I think I have decided to go with a regular large. So I was just looking for some bodies, some tubes and whatnot. If this would make any sense, I was experimenting with the tubes. And then I tried to put the tubes and actually I didn't like how that looked. It looked hideous. So I reverted back to going with the quad coupler. Where was it? Okie doke, somewhere out there. The large one, good. Then you, what I wanted to place was the docking ports and then they can be found under the couplers and those are actually large. So in Kerbal Space Program 2, we were used to have these 2.5 meters, but those are now medium as mentioned by MD. These are three and a half, uh, 3.5 meter decouplers, which we didn't have in the previous one, in the previous game. So yeah, I think it looks cool when you actually assemble it all together. I guess the bear strutted was, uh, I didn't like it very, that much, but see, now that we build these, and then we can actually build, now I need to have some tanks. Uh, and I'm looking for the Methalox tank, good. And then I'm looking for an engine that will actually get the station orbital. And I'm gonna go with Rhino. So with that thing being said, it's 3.9 thousand meters per second. So it has plenty to actually just get up on its own. It's possible, but I do want to have a fuel tank because in the future we might need to want to use fuel. The fact that you can actually, and we want to have a decoupler below so that we can actually dock with it. The problem that I haven't yet seen a way how to transfer fuel between the stages. I don't think it's implemented yet in KSP2. Probably they're gonna add it at some point, but yeah. Then I was looking into, shall we build a fairing around this? Because, well, yeah, we could. So let's try it out. All right. Fairings are a little bit different in KSP2, and honestly, I'm not sure that I like them very much. Uh, I like the KSP1's fairings better. These are a little bit more like, you know, add, add, add. I mean, they're not bad, they're just different, and I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of them. See, now I'm trying to experiment how would I be able to close this fairing and without making it overly gigantic. So, like I said, not a big fan. You actually expand them by dragging one of the arrows and you add more sections by adding plus. So, it's like a step-by-step -step building, yeah. All right, I mean, that's something that, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of them. But that, that's, as, that's as much as I can tell you, look. They're not, they're a little bit clunky, if you will. Right. <laughs> so, 
So, after some finicking, I have decided to go with this setup. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I guess it will work. All right. So, by the way, devs, if you see this, this methane opening of fairing does look hideous. I mean, it's clipping a little bit too much. Okay, I am strutting because I'm not using the enhanced joint reinforcement. Actually, this was recorded way before people figured out that you could do the joint reinforcement. So I was strutting the bananas out of everything. All right. And then I'm gonna go with the large reaction wheels. And I'm actually gonna put two so that we have a fairly decent control authority. Then we move this up and then we need to construct the rocket that will actually get it off the ground. Needless to the fact that I could have easily launched this, you know, on its own. But yeah, okay. And I was now thinking of going with the extra large and trying to find the engine for the extra large, which doesn't exist. And I realized, oh, wait, hold on a second. If I go with extra large, how will I actually use the engine? Maybe thrust plate? Okay, yeah, we can try with the thrust plate. And uh, what I'm gonna be placing, rhinos? Well, technically they don't work that way. Oh, these ones, labradoodle, that's uh, no, no, not gonna work. So if I took mammoth, yeah, that could work. What's my thrust to weight? 0 0.9, <laughs> forget about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a regular large tank and I'm gonna probably use two of them. And then we have 1.3 thrust to weight. Okay, that's actually way better. Um, I don't want to use too many parts because, well, <laughs> KSP2 doesn't work well with too many parts, to be honest. So yeah. I mean, it's not very collaborative, let's just call it that. All right, so making sure that I have strutted everything and uh, there are 6,053 meters per second. So, station core, launch. Hitting the countdown, and by the way, I know the sound is a little bit funkier because I'm sped up everything twice. That's why you have this buttery smooth takeoff. Yes, I don't have that beefy machine, but I have the power of video acceleration <laughs> in editing. So Tim C and Jerdas Kerman, you guys are going to be the first Kerbonaut to establish the Kerbonautical Space Station in the low carbon orbit. Right, so. There we go. I mean, uh, the rocket looks solid. I don't know why when you're looking at the cloud layer, everything becomes fuzzy. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of that. I do like that clouds are a little bit more volumetric. Well, a little bit more, but I mean, the ones that uh, are actually volumetric clouds in now in KSP-1, those are actually way better. So yeah, but it's, it's a subject for improvement. So I mean, the KSP-2 has much bigger issues that it needs to fix rather than the volumetric clouds at the moment. So, right, let's drag on these and also make sure that we have correctly placed stage. There we go. Game on paused. There we go, ditching the fairing, aligning the vector prograde. And there we go. Now we can just continue the burn and everything will be dandy. All right. Just dragging the circle so we can circularize. I guess it's another bug. Well, no matter. I'm not gonna let bugs detract me from my mission, which would be establishing the Carbonautical Space Station in the low carbon orbit. All right, so we are close to the apoapsis, which means we should be burning to raise our periapsis above 100k meters. And that's something that we are successfully doing. I mean, I don't need helper tools, I can do it manually. Okay, and now 117 by 97, I just, we are above the atmosphere. So here I'm gonna be doing some tweaks. At the apoapsis, I'm gonna raise the periapsis to 100 and something, and then we will be doing some corrections. So that's actually the first part. So the first part is getting the core stage into orbit, deploy everything, and then we're good. 
and we're actually on the 10 minute, 10 minute mark. Perfect. Yeah, doing good so far. Okay, let me just quickly align and make sure that we correct. I am thrust limiting because I do want... What are you doing now? Turn around. I would like it to get 100 by 100, ideally. Let's see if we manage to do that. So... All right, stop. There we go. 100. Good. And now let's take the periapsis and we need to correct the apoapsis. All right. Let's turn. All right. And then we shall be correcting the apoapsis as soon as we come closer to the periapsis. Okay, 100 by 90 and I guess we should do a final push at the apoapsis to raise the periapsis a little and then we will be fine. I'm trying to enforce 100 by 100, it will be easier further down the line. And it will look nicer so you really want when you're put the effort when you're putting in your core stage after all everything else will be going there so yeah all right uh i'd say i would say this is close enough so i'm deactivating the rhino engine just making sure that we cannot burn any longer we will be aligning the station a normal prograde and that will actually place it you know vertical up then I want to be turning it so that well, people with the command pod can actually see, just so that they're nice and sunny. And then we're going to be unfolding the solar panels, of course. And there we go. I would consider that that would be our core stage deployed. So now <clears throat> we should be figuring out the function and for the second stage and or actually the second component habitation module right design there's going to be a habitation module left but the principles are the same i'm not going to show you both i'm just showing you how the habitation module right should be constructed so i start with the probe core because this one will be flying without crew then we take the reaction wheels and then at the bottom i do place a um, docking port because this is the section that will be docking then I'm trying to find a eight seat crew cabin. There we go, Wayfarer. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Then I'm gonna be taking the rest. So there we go. I need to be placing an antenna because this actually needs to be able to fly so on its own. And I'm guessing, I don't know how much uh, communication network is implemented in KSP2, but if you want to fly a probe core, I think you should better have the connectivity, right? Well, that was at least in Comnet in KSP1, so I don't want to test it yet. Well, at least not while I'm building this. So I'm putting the monoprop tank. Actually, I'm always thinking if I should be placing it here, but I think it's actually better I place it on top so we have a little bit of, you know, balance act. There we go. Then I need the top part of the station so I'm looking for an adapter that's also dubs as a fuel tank now I'm looking for a yeah that one because that will be actually docking ports for the medium ones which are 2.5 meters so you want to have a various uh, if you remember in the core stage we have for the 3.75 and uh, the small ones 1.2 but not for the three for the 2.5 so this one would actually take that role as well uh, I'm just trying to see if I could maybe do it you know rectangular just to make it on the fun side but honestly I hated the design this design it doesn't really look cool I don't know it doesn't gel with me very nicely oh well, we can give it a try All right, so antennas, I actually might place them here-ish. Yeah, I don't know why, that design is just not working for me. Let me see if I take this round one and then like this, maybe it's better. 
Well, in theory it could work, but it's just hideous. I don't know, I, I actually don't like it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this reductor and then I'm gonna place the regular circular one. Okay, well, that now actually does make sense to me. So let's place the docking ports. Remember, these are the 2.5 meter docking ports and I'm trying to do the symmetry, but it didn't really want to collaborate. So I'm rather than that, I'm just going to do one by one. So, okay. Well, that looks actually marginally better. And I'm going to put a small docking port on top. Usually this is what I call my SSTO dock, assuming that I ever managed to build an SSTO that can get there and make a rendezvous with it. <laughs> yeah, now I'm just daydreaming. Okay, anyway, we've got this. I mean, I like building SSTOs, but that's kind of a more of a Matt, Matt Lowndes shtick. However, you never know. You have to be positive, right? All right, so uh, what I want to do now, I want to make sure that I have all of my antennas, batteries, and RCS thrusters, because this one will be maneuvering to rendezvous with the station. So I'm actually going to kit it out with a lot of thrusters. I don't have the RCS build aid. That would be mighty helpful in this case. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait until the mods catch up, I guess. All right, good. So, by the way, I have also started to see that there are some mods for the KSP2, which I think is great, especially in terms of custom flags. Uh, thanks to Matt for that, I guess. All right, so, putting some lights. And I'm thinking I'm going to go with the red on this side and with the green on the other side. I What can I tell you? I'm used to be around ships, and when you're sailing, you know... The left is red, the red is, is green, and yeah. All right, so some more uh, stack separators. So here I'm putting the stack separator and then I should be putting a fairing, also a bigger fairing. This one shouldn't be that of a problematic because this one should be quite simple to build. There are no extruded parts, so this one should be very straightforward. Something like that. Yeah. Okay, let's let's just rebuild it quickly. Like that, like that, and then close it completely. There we go. I think that looks good. Alright, and buggy. <laughs> so <clears throat> Now, fuel tanks, I'm going to take the large fuel tank. Now, in this tank, we need to have enough to do the real rendezvous. So, what I'm planning to take this one with the Rhino engine, and then I'm going to need two more with the Mastodon just to get it up. 2.4 thousand meters per second. Well, I, as I said, I always over-engineer my craft, so that's one of my curses. But uh, all in all, at least you will be able to have this docked. All right. All right, so we have two, one tank below. I think I want to have another tank below. All right, and then we're gonna build the Mastodon engine and that one should have a decent 1.32 thrust to weight. Interesting. So the bigger station that was above was actually less weight. Yeah, well, this one has a big um, crew quarters. All true. So 4.3 thousand meters per second should be enough to get us into orbit. Now let's do the engine trusses. We can put some side boosters just to give us that little extra oomph just in case we actually spend a lot of energy on the rendezvous and stuff. So yeah. Like I said, this, this is a little bit longer episode, but I wanted you guys to see my, you know, design process, how I'm doing this, given that KSP2 is so new. Probably in the future episodes, I will accelerate this even more heavily and uh, just skip the boring part, so to say. So, yeah. <clears throat> this one, I think it's uh, at least slow enough that you can build along beside it. So, yeah. All right. So... 
as I said, strutted everything. And then we should be considering the launch. I should actually put those in the same stage because it's 1.002. I always check my thrust to weight at takeoff because it's really important. You don't want to be below 1.3-ish. Um, ideally, you want at 1.6. So putting on the launch clamps. There we go. And the launch clamps should fire the same time the engines fire, so we don't need them separately. The vehicle is not going to be fly safe because it doesn't look like a safe to me, so that's fine. Every, every week, it's kind of funny if you think about it. The vehicles are called fly safe and the wobbliness of the everything, the kraken and everything, I don't know. So, Habitat module right launch first of all I'm actually getting the station in place so that it will be catching up to us and then we're getting ready for the launch Three two one hitting the countdown Water deluge igniters and hit it I took a screenshot and it backfired. Yeah, all right Trying to find a nice decent view and orient myself so I know which way <laughs> I was supposed to be watching. Alright, starting the gravity turn. We have more than plenty Delta V in this stage so I'm not overly concerned. Hopefully everything should be fine and no problems should arise. Right, okay, so there we go. Perfect. Looks kind of good. There we go. Pitching for that 100 and uh, something kilometer apoapsis. I'm actually thinking I might even go higher and let the station catch up to me. But that will be fine. All right. There we go making sure that I create a maneuver node. That's fine. Circularize and beautiful. Look, looks good to me, I would say. Although we do want to make sure, well, yeah, no, it's just crazy. Okay, tell you what, I don't need the, I don't need the apoapsis, periapsis, a maneuver node. I just need to know which direction to point. All right, there we go, pointing the maneuver prograde and getting ready for the burn. There we go, ditching the fairing. Okay. All right. There we go, extending the Communitron 8888. And the burn will be in 15 seconds. 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and ignite the damn thing. All right. I really do like the music. The music is awesome in KSP2. It's one of those things that really did right. I mean, honestly, I love the graphics. So if, if you ask me what did they do, do right from the start, in the KSP on the EA launch, I would tell you three things. One would be the graphics. I really enjoyed them, regardless of the performance. Second thing would be music. The soundtrack is downright amazing and I love the sounds. And the third one would be the intro that they posted on Steam. I mean, that one is freaking amazing. I mean, uh, it's uh, at this point it's not doing the game many favors because when people actually download it, they're super excited and then they look and it's a little bit disappointed, which is fair enough because the game is in early access and it's actually just launched. I know it's not excuse, but I am actually more happy that it launched rather than uh, than it didn't. So the rendezvous. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if the game launched, that means that also we as a community have a chance 
to actually help the developers in terms of finding bugs and everything. And I know some of you might say, well, that's not our problem, the devs should have done it. You're right, but this is the way where we could get the bugs fixed quicker. I mean, we are the community of who, how many thousands of play, how many thousands players. We will be for sure encountering bugs much more frequent and much more um, actively than the devs will because they also need to develop. And if we report these bugs in the correct way, uh, which is basically how it does it manifest, what, what's happening, how to correct it, or what, what will be our take on the thing, that actually gives the devs idea where to look and basically gives them a punch list rather than they're having to explore and find things on their own. So it, we, in that way, we're kind of helping them. All right, so like I said, rendezvous. Now what I'm doing, I'm just adjusting my maneuver node until I get two to align. So this is how you do a rendezvous. You have a point I1 and I2. Those are basically intersect points. So what you want to do is that I1 intersects with I1 with a marker on top because I1 is your position at the time of the rendezvous, while the I1 with the target basically means I1 at the target location. So like I said, the, pos the point is that we just now try to get a good alignment and I'm trying to figure out how will I rendezvous with the station. So first things, we have plenty of Delta V, we have 1600, 40, and that's more than it, than we need for, for a successful rendezvous. Hell, it's enough to get to moon and get the rendezvous there. However, okay, so now you see, and typically I'm burning at, either at apoapsis or at periapsis, and now I'm just making sure that since we are a little bit ahead of the station, we'll need to catch up with the station. I will for the time being do like that. We need to catch up with the station. So that means I will be doing a maneuver node burns where we will be going into the lower orbit than the station. Or actually, no, we will let the station catch up to us. But it will take a multiple circles. So as you can see, then the intercept one and two are changing. I'm gonna now cut to the part where we, we actually get uh, an alignment that's close enough so that I can tweak it with maneuver node. Ah, there we go. Actually, didn't need to cut it out. So, we're getting quite close intersects. And now what we need to do is to make sure that we burn towards the target. So, there's a target. It's 44 kilometers, so it's still far out. But let's see if we can tweak that. So, if I put a maneuver node here. It is a little bit more hard to get a good encounter these days, but yeah. Okay, so if we look here, we have I1, which are two very close, and I2. Both of them will be rendezvous separated by 27 kilometers. So now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get these two to align by burning retrograde or prograde to make sure that both markers will align. So if we burn that way, they will align eventually. Come on, come on, come on. I'm now looking at the I2. See, those are separated, getting closer and closer. Those are 19 kilometers separated. So if I decelerate a bit more, now they're actually 460 meters and that's good enough. So that's the idea. You want to get these two to align together. And that will be a burn of 83 meters per second burning probably retrograde. I'm not yet sure until I actually see it because it doesn't tell me. It does look like orbit retrograde. Yeah, all right. There we go. Fine. And in 10 seconds, I will be doing the burn. So also, I will not be doing the burn the entire time. So as you can see right now, going, 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 going. Now I stop. And now I delete the maneuver node because I want to be able to manually tweak those values. So if I continue the burn, ah, see here I got the I1 and I2. And now just I burn until this distance from target is reduced. And I think I overshot it by a little bit. So I actually enable the RCS and I'm pressing N to thrust backwards until I get a good encounter. That's another trick that you guys can do. So, okay, now 
I wanted to time warp to this point so that we meet with the station. There we go. Awesome. And now we let's reduce. So now we are going 15 meters per second relative to the target. And I have no clue. Ah, there's target. Okay, 1.6 kilometers. So I want to make sure that we are burning towards the target and ensuring the encounter because currently we are going away from it. So now I was think now you have two options. At this point, you should either burn towards your target and put your prograde markers to align or make sure that you're decelerating to the target uh, relative to the target in which case yours and targets retrograde markers should align on the nav ball. So now given the fact that I'm going 12 meters per second, in my opinion, that's a little bit too slow. I am burning prograde to ensure and in such a way that I'm trying to align the white prograde, which is the target prograde marker and the green prograde marker so that they're together. As you can tell, I'm actually doing very piss poor job of it. But okay, we have to going 20 meters per second and we are making sure that we should be, uh, oh, you see, we are doing the change here. So now what I want to do, I want to decelerate relative to the target. And now we are going into the docking sequence. So, okay, I just want to make sure that I kill. Oh, I pressed, oof. I pressed Z instead of X. Yeah, that's usually a bad idea. So we are going away. Okay, turn around and basically burn again prograde towards the target to make sure that we rendezvous with it. It's a little bit of frustrating because my reaction wheels are not working 100% because this rocket is heavy as hell. So actually uh, the having a rocket tank is not doing me any favors. I should probably ditch it. So as you can tell, I'm trying to align the markers and just making sure that we can I'm all the time I'm maintaining my visual um, yeah so as I said re reaction wheels are very much nerfed in this instance so what you want to do is you want to go and burn a little bit more prograde so that you get the, your you know alignment markers to align and my rocket is spinning but I'm gonna use that to hopefully get into the correct alignment so yeah, oh, we are drifting further away. Okay, so tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna engage my main engine to burn prograde to the target. And then hopefully I will be able to decelerate in time. So what I'm trying to get is once again, those two aligned. And as you can tell, we are doing a good job of it. So now I'm gonna be using RCS thrusters to decelerate as we come in and I'm using I, J, K and L to make sure that I'm maintaining the green mark on the white mark. Okay, now I have decoupled because actually it's much easier for me to control the station part and rotate and do all the docking necessary thingies. So, I'm trying to once again burn towards the target. I know which way I'm aligned, good. It was actually hard to set up this docking, but I figured might as well, you know, do that. So I'm going to decelerate now. It's just a matter of figuring out where to burn. So I'm pointing towards the target. So if I press H, I will be burning towards it. Good. And I'm decreasing my velocity. And now look, I'm getting those markers easier to align, much easier. And my velocity relative is 1.8 meters per second. Good. So now you want, at this distance of 150, you want your target velocity not to be much higher than two. And I, at this point, I was actually hoping to be able to switch to the other craft. And I was trying to figure out if I could, from here, directly say that I could control it, but apparently not. All right, so I'm just coasting to get close and now I can see the docking ports. Okay, wait. Let's kill our relative velocity. So now what I should do, I should turn off the, basically the RCS. Okay, target 0, 0.0. Control from here, which would here being the 
um, the nav ball, or not the nav ball, the docking port, and I'm trying to visually align it to one of the docking ports of the station. So just making sure to figure out where is north, how to align it, okay. I don't want to, it to be crooked or anything, so that's, that's another thing to consider. Okay, I think now visually they're sort of aligned. So I'm gonna set this one as a target. And also second, if I go with the station part, okay. Now let's do this. We're ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, so now I'm actually thrusting a little bit north. I'm observing the way which my thrusters are firing and making sure that our relative velocity, I'm not no longer looking at the nav ball, I'm looking visually at the moment because I don't have a better alignment at this time. So we're coming in here and I'm checking from different angles. This gives me a, I'm using more like 2D perspectives individually. All right, oh, 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 wrong way, wrong way. Decelerate, yes. Okay, burn a little bit towards it and I'm actually crooked. So, okay, first kill the relative velocity, try to align towards it and then turn off the SAS Turn off the RCS and then just rotate. All right. And now let's try again going towards it a little bit further down. Right, forward, up, and docked. Vessel launched, close, progress, yes. It's not the best and I know there are many ways that, that you guys are gonna tell me it's suboptimal. Yes, it is but it works and I've managed to do it and I'm super happy. So if you have found this information so far thus helpful, regardless of the length, do fling me a like, I appreciate it a great deal and I will be seeing you in my next video. Thank you very much for watching and with this beautiful view, Groundworks is signing off.